Welcome to Signal and Sixton le Lecture Series. Here in this session, I'll be going to explain some basics of convolution and I'll define what is convolution and how we can utilize convolution. So see, basically convolution is a mathematical operation which express input and output relation for LTI system. So one thing that we need to take care of convolution that we apply to LTI system only. So whenever you have been given with LTI system, one can operate with convolution. LTI means linear time invariant system. So system should follow linearity as well as time invariance property. I have already explained in my signal and system lecture series what is linearity and what is time invariance. In linearity, system should follow superposition principle while in case of time invariance, systems characteristics should not change with respect to time. So that is what time invariance. So as if system follows linearity as well as time invariance, it is called as linear time invariant system. And in linear time invariant system, convolution is a mathematical operation which express input output relation. Convolution is widely used in many fields like probability and statistics. In those subjects, even you will be finding convolution is widely utilized. Convolution of two signal produces third signal. So when you do convolution of two continuous time signal, it will be generating one another continuous time signal. And as if you operate with discrete signal for convolution, you will be generating discrete signal. In this lecture series, you will be finding different cases of convolution for continuous time as well as discrete time. I will explain some examples based on that. So you will get to know like how we can have convolution. By using convolution, we can find zero state response. So these are the basics which is there regarding convolution. Now let us try to understand how we apply convolution. So for example, if we have a system and as I have told you earlier, system should be LTI system. So system must be linear time invariant system and with the system if I give you x of t input and if system's impulse response is h of t and if it is producing y of t output so in that case convolution for continuous time signal for continuous time we can have convolution which will be generating output so y of t that will be convolution of input signal x of t into impulse response of that h of t and symbol of convolution is star so this star explains convolution in between x of t and h of t is generating output y of t and when you want to calculate that mathematically basic formula for that will be integration minus infinite to infinite x of tau h of t minus tau d2. So here usually we do integral multiplication of input and impulse response where impulse response is shifted one folded and shifted one over here and one can go for folding and shifting of input instead of h of t. So for that even I will be writing formula. So convolution could be done in two ways. Either you shift input signal or you can shift impulse response. So here in second formula, I will be folding and shifting impulse input signal and impulse response will be as it is. So x of t minus tau h of tau d2. That is how by having integration one can calculate this. And one more thing that we need to observe here in frequency domain, in frequency domain, if you have y of f or y of omega, it will be multiplication of these two signals in frequency domain. So in frequency domain, y of omega output response in frequency domain, that is x of omega, h of omega. So that is how convolution relation is there. Now, if I say we have discrete signal and if that discrete signal is x of n at input side and if system impulse response is h of n and in that case output 
discrete signal will be y of n so for that for that we can even do convolution so for discrete signal your output y of n that will be convolution of input signal x of n convolution h of n so symbol of convolution that is star which is what generating output signal based on convolution of input signal and impulse response of discrete signal of that particular linear time invariant system and mathematically you can calculate this convolution with summation k varies from minus infinite to infinite x of n h of n minus k and even same thing that we can calculate by shifting x instead of h here what i have done is i have folded h and shifted it with respect to time and now same thing that we can apply it by shifting input signal so that will be n minus <coughs> x of x of n minus k h of n so this is how even we can have calculation so ultimately here one thing that is noticeable like in continuous time as well as in discrete time we can have convolution with multiplication of two signal where another signal is folded first so minus t means folded version of original one and then we are shifting it so in there are two ways basically you can even fold input signal and then shift it so whenever you calculate examples based on convolution you will have to see which signal is easier to fold and shift and based on that one should calculate examples so in next few sessions you will be observing examples based on convolution i'll explain properties of convolution i'll explain how we can solve examples for continuous time as well as discrete time so this is what about basic formulas and basics of convolution in next few sessions you will be observing how we can apply convolution Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give your valuable suggestions. Definitely based on your suggestions in future I will make videos which will be solving queries of students studying over here from my channel. Thank you so much.